Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Jackie Bray. I'm the commissioner at the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services here in the state of New York. Uh, and I really want to thank you for traveling to Oriskany to be with us here today. Uh, I want to welcome you to the State Preparedness Training Center. Um, I am so excited that you're here. I know many of you are very familiar with this really wonderful venue. Uh, but here uh, today, you're here because we know, and Governor Hochul knows, that we cannot tackle this critical issue uh, without all of you and your leadership at the local level. We're here today to talk about how to keep our communities safe by facing the threat of domestic terrorism head on. We are all brutally aware of the domestic terror attack on our neighbors in Buffalo just three months ago. It was carried out by a New Yorker, radicalized, by white supremacy and motivated to violence online who killed 10 members of the Buffalo community. The attack was carried out because those 10 people were black. They were yeah. targeted because of the color of their skin. Many of us came of age professionally in the two decades since 9-11. Homeland Security as a field and an arena that we work in was really founded after that horrible attack. And the public safety officers in the state have done everything they can do to keep New Yorkers safe since. But the threats have changed. And we have work to do to make sure that our efforts to protect our communities have kept up. The greatest threat we face to our homeland today is not from outside our borders, it's from within. Today, domestic violent extremism is the greatest terror threat and white supremacist violence, the deadliest. And they haven't been isolated incidents. 16 months before the Buffalo attack, domestic extremists violently attacked the Capitol. Last year, the ADL reports that over 600 incidents of domestic extremism occurred in New York State, over 300 of which were motivated by white supremacy and white nationalism. As people who take public safety seriously, we must become experts, all of us, in how to confront domestic extremism, particularly white nationalist extremism in all its forms. Because we have a duty to understand what we can do now to reduce the chance that this type of violence will visit our communities again. And that's why we're here today. Under Governor Hochul's leadership, she issued Executive Order 18 it creates the Office of Domestic Terrorism Prevention within DISHES, and it resources all of our counties to create locally driven domestic terrorism prevention plans. Because we can't be successful without you, and we know it. You know the worst the feeling, worst feeling is looking back looking over back puzzle pieces, pieces never connected. connected. So we're so going to start, start our work, our work together, together with a proven, with a proven strategy, strategy to prevent targeted, targeted violence. violence. Targeted violence is ideologically neutral. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter to us what the violence is motivated by. It matters, it matters to us that people are motivated to hurt other people. And this week, and this we're going to learn about, about threat, assessment threat assessment and management, and management teams, teams as a way, a way to confront targeted, targeted violence. violence. These, are These are interdisciplinary teams. teams. They work they together, work together. Not, not to confront, to confront, confront an ideology, ideology, but to confront the violence that radicalization creates that grievance, grievance creates. creates. It's about, it's about connecting, connecting the dots, the dots to reduce the violence. the violence. Governor Hochul Governor and I, I our number our one goal, goal is to protect New Yorkers. Yorkers. I know that's, I know your, that's your number one goal, goal too. too. So I wanna so thank you for being, being here. here. There is a there lot is of work, work to do. To do. And now, now, without, without any further any delay, delay, I wanna I introduce, introduce my boss and the fantastic governor of this wonderful state, Kathy Hochul. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us, uh, some remotely, some in person. I've been to Riscany before. I actually uh, did some the EVOC training on the track, didn't do so well, so I had to go to another avenue, but I've been always intrigued with uh, the training programs that we've been able to offer there. When I was in local government years ago, we used to send members of our town police force to Riscany for training as well, so, uh, so you're in the right place. Uh, it's not a new venue for most of you, but it's a place where we believe that it's a perfect place to impart ideas for, to you, but also to bring back ideas from all of you who are literally in the streets and on the ground on the front line of our battle to protect the homeland. 
Uh, we have a, a stellar leader in Commissioner Jackie Bray. I want to thank her for her vision, the way she approaches the questions. And I was listening to her a little bit earlier, and uh, she phrased it exactly the way I do. Are we ready to meet the threat? And there's no shame in saying we're not. It's simply saying that there are forces out there that are spending day and night trying to thwart our efforts and our responsibility is to make sure that we're ahead of it and share information. So, so the role you play in fighting homegrown terrorist threats is critical. You're at the tip of the spear. You'll take what you learn here, bring it back to your communities, uh, train the trainer. And this is so important, as you heard from the commissioner, our number one responsibility is so crystal clear, so simple. It is simply to keep New Yorkers safe. And as you heard and you know, uh, one of the biggest threats we face as a state is something that is happening within our borders, domestic terrorism, and specifically white supremacist extremism. And it's not just us saying well, there's a couple of big cases. The number of cases have more than tripled uh, from 20, uh, 2011 to nearly 70, 73 cases last year alone. And the ADL has reported there's more than 600 extremist incidents in New York State just last year. Uh, more than half of them being organized dissemination of white supremacist information. So, so New Yorkers have been victimized. These are our residents. These are our fellow neighbors. And that is why there's a sense of urgency with how we approach this. And yes, you all know this. I know it very well. I spent a tremendous amount of time there. But when we saw what happened on May 14th, an individual who was radicalized, uh, an 18-year-old, radicalized by white supremacists and white nationalist beliefs, he opened fire on a top supermarket in Buffalo literally 11 minutes from where I live in the city. This is a neighborhood I know well. It's one I've frequented often. And the terror still exists there. I was there two weekends ago, and people are still afraid to go in a grocery store. This has affected them to their core, not just the victim families who will take a lifetime to heal, but a whole community that was paralyzed to actually think that a fellow New Yorker could travel three hours targeting their neighborhood with one purpose and his stated goal was to execute black New Yorkers. And as a result, um, we mourn the loss of 10 individuals, but he was not born with this hate in his heart, this shooter. He absorbed these toxic ideals and ra racist philosophies because they're so easily accessible on social media platforms, and in some cases, uh, the dark web and cable news networks. And they've been mainstreamed. These you know, these anti-Semitic and white supremacist ideas have been mainstreamed by a lot of reckless media personalities, unaccountable social media companies, and the, the breeding ground for this hate is mostly online. And you think about the timing. You know, this individual, 18 years old, the last two years he was probably isolated in his home during the pandemic, not in school, and you just wonder how many other people we're absorbing this content under those same circumstances when they didn't have the uh, supervision of a classroom setting. So I believe that there's probably more cases out there, uh, more people following the example of this one person. As we also know, there's a lot of copycat cases. You know, we studied the data. This individual studied very closely what had happened in Christchurch, the massacre down in New Zealand. He, he absorbed it, he shared it, and he's not the only one doing that. So what we've also learned is they're using violence to further their aims. They choose violence as a response to some political grievance they have or some way they've been radicalized. But here's what we have to do. We have to say, not in New York. Not in New York, and when it starts here, we'll eradicate it. And I issued an executive order, as you heard, directing every single county in the city of New York to develop plans to identify and confront the threats of domestic terrorism. What we're talking about over the next couple of days is to help you prepare for that. We're not leaving you alone. I'm well familiar with uh, unfunded mandates, having spent many years in local government, and every time we have an idea at the state level we think is important to share and implement at the local level, I want to make sure there's money behind it, so we'll be talking about that. But we have so much to do to address this. So we're also asking the Homeland Security and Emergency Services to help us create threat assessment management teams. And that'll not just be law enforcement, but mental health professionals, school officials, and other key stakeholders to help identify and assess the threat of targeted violence. So you're gonna leave here today with a real fundamental understanding of what these teams can do. 
I hope you will take that back to your communities. And as part of this, we're all keeping them protected. And also our extreme risk orders of protection, a different dynamic in one sense, but not really. And we're doing so much more to support your efforts to ensure that these are filed, that the actions are taken to remove uh, weapons from someone who's already shown a propensity or telegraphed their intent to harm individuals in a school or a workplace setting. So you'll be getting more information about that as well. It's something I've been meeting with my my team with regularly to make sure we can issue that information very shortly. So, so we have a lot of ideas, but also we do not have a monopoly on those ideas. Many of the ideas that I think will be most helpful will come from all of you. So again, this is an opportunity for us to share data, figure out how we can, as uh, the commissioner said, connect the dots. That's all everybody talked about after 9-11 is why didn't we see this coming? Why didn't we connect the dots? And now with social media platforms so widely available, they can be examined, they need to be examined because the Buffalo shooter could have been stopped in his tracks because he basically in demonstrated and said what he intended to do. So we are in the not crime solving business today, we're in the crime prevention business. And that starts with our co concentrated effort on domestic terrorism. And uh, those of you who know my background, this is deeply personal to me as well. My husband being a federal prosecutor for over 30 years, U.S. attorney, but before that, uh, he handled terrorism in the aftermath of 9-11 and, and was able to eradicate uh, a lot of threats. Uh, the first prosecution of Al-Qaeda after 9-11 after in, the, in the United States to demonstrate that there's also people, not just on what, the white supremacist front, but other areas where there's these threats are percolating. They're underground today, but when they show up and manifest themselves, in a real actionable way, now we have communities that are terrorized. And that is what we're fighting against. We're fighting it not alone, we're fighting it together. And for that, I thank you for being part of this initiative to just protect our homeland. Uh, I can't think of a higher calling than to make sure that our neighbors and our fellow residents are safe. So thank you everyone and uh, carry on. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. All right. All right.